Now uh, we have about, we started this session five minutes ahead of schedule, so we have about 45 minutes. But bottom line is, I'm going to uh, have this session continue until we run out of the questions and the comments. So uh, uh, if you have questions, comments, please uh, put this name plate up so that I, I can see your names. Uh, yes, please. I was really impressed by the presentations, uh, which is this uh, try for interdisciplinary work, and especially by presentation with me by uh, Kevin O'Brien and some uh, Professor Sonoda. But uh, I just have a question kind of of practical aspects. If you, for example, hire a professor intending to send it some, somewhere to other department, or if you are in, uh, kind of like in, um, hiring people, but they should go to other department to work, you know, then how to run the system? You should pay the salary, kind of, you know, it's kind of more, very complicated. Yeah, how we do it? Yeah. Give us some advice. For, for those of you who do hiring, in my institute we do no hiring. We control no faculty whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And we're really more like a foundation in many respects, that we hand out money to our faculty to do their own research and uh, to our students to do their own research and run conferences and those sorts. So we don't control faculty in the way that Professor Shin does. So I don't have an image nearly as good as a geisha house, but more like a foundation <laughs> or more like uh, a soft money science institute where we get money and then we use money on those projects and we try to draw people toward it. But if they're drawn to it, they're drawn to it. If they're not, they're not. So for example, we just recently had a, a big grant, a big gift from Samsung Electronics uh, to, to work on a creative study. It happens to be on literature and culture. We have other people who work on film history. We have other people who work on Korean anthropology. Our Korean Study Center now is going to be focused on literature, culture, film, the issues that we have money for and that we have faculty for. It's not going to be focused on politics and economics because we don't have faculty in that area and we don't have money to do it. So we can't move people to an area. We have to support what they're already doing. Well, your question is very, you know, touchy. I mean, this, uh, to be frank, it's quite difficult, so especially those who are in the tenure track, to ask him yeah. or her to go to that uh, uh, school, practice school or other institutes to uh, to do some interdisciplinary studies. Uh, yeah, interdisciplinary studies. That's why I, I, I said that we have been using a long time to uh, recruit some professors, mostly young, uh, promising and devoted, uh, but and, uh, unfortunately to say, they are short-term uh, contracted. So, you know, there's a kind of distinction between those who are secure and those who are not secure. So, those who are not secure, however, in, a, in paradox case speaking, have a willingness to do interdisciplinary information studies. So, I've been working with them, not with the older generations. Okay, I don't see any nameplate, but it's too early for us to adjourn. Uh, so uh, let me let me throw uh, one question for everyone uh, from the panel. Uh, in fact, to be to be frank, uh, the presentation were too much about organizational charts to me, uh, rather than talking really about how to go about doing interdisciplinary research. But I, I came to realize that a couple of people are using the terms. For instance, uh, Kevin talked about. Uh, Beijing Qinghua Center as a sort of uh, a venue for where interdisciplinary research could be conducted. And also, Professor Shinge also talked about, you know, APOC is different from Center for East Asian Studies because it is more likely to do an uh, interdisciplinary approach. Although I, I wasn't quite sure what, what the logic was. And then uh, Professor Sonoda talked about Geisha House. Uh, and the uh, 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 Professor Bang Min Ryu talked about interface where different disciplines uh, come to connect with each other. And then Professor Han talked about this uh, interlocking sphere. So we're all talking about something in terms of topics, a venue. But we never talked about how we are going to actually structure or go about implementing this interdiscipline research. So I would like to focus on how from now on rather than what. Uh, if you have any comments, please. Okay, so, uh, I thought it was quite clear, but maybe not so. Okay. 
this is John. Okay, so uh, at least in integrated states, uh, you know, conventional uh, ALS state centers, they don't have any of their own FTEs like uh, Berkeley because you know all the professors belong to their own department, you know, anthropology, uh, sociology, political science, and so on. So that you know they can work together through maybe projects or maybe some seminars, colloquium, and so on. But then the center doesn't have its own faculty line. But in our case, we do have our own line. Right? That's the main difference. Okay, that's one. The other one. Uh, therefore, uh, we can uh, discuss among our own faculty, you know, research fellow, and so on about a possible collaborative project that people can be involved. Okay, that's why, let's say, uh, if you write a report on North Korea, for instance, then it's not simply uh, written by just different people, but uh, let's say, you know, you know, including political scientists, you know, formal policy maker, maybe other practitioner, we are writing reports jointly together, so that there's a one report uh, written by uh, several, several people from different backgrounds. Well, that's why I'm saying it's more interdisciplinary, not uh, just a collection of people. But we are talking and working together to produce one product. Is that clear or still not clear? Let me hear from uh, the yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. I can speak to one aspect of the how question, dating back more to my time when I was the head of the Center of Chinese Studies. Uh, I, I agree, it's difficult to move faculty, but graduate students are different. Than graduate students, uh, just to be able to first expose them to all the research going on, to give them a second home on campus rather than their department makes a very big difference. Uh, but the most important thing I think I did uh, as an initiative that I would, I would highly recommend doing uh, to draw in graduate students was the day after somebody gave a talk. We do over 250 talks a year in conferences and other things that are institute every day of the year that go on. But on some of the bigger ones, or the ones that I thought were hopeful, or people I knew who I could get to do it, I would ask them to stay over an extra day. And on Saturday morning, I would have them come and meet with our graduate students, whoever wanted to, in all of Chime Studies. And I used to just call it, how I found out what I found out. And the idea was to talk about essentially what came down to field work, methodology, ground, uh, anything that showed people how the sausage was made, that showed people how to do the research. And I found this as being something that grad students were very interested in and at least were willing to learn about methodologies that were going on in other fields and would come together and we'd meet for two or three hours. Sometimes I had to force people to go out and get out in the taxi to get to the airport. And so the faculty enjoyed doing this as well and it brought together grad students from very different departments all talking about practical, or theoretical, or methodological questions that at least exposed them to the other disciplines and how research was done outside their own field that they were hearing about in their own department. Anyone else? Well, uh, I'm a little bit, you know, uh, I'm regretting that, uh, that I have used it in what I know, better from a geisha house. Uh, which might be confusing you, but uh, there might be two, uh, I think, uh, uh, two ways to in, uh, to promote the kind of interdisciplinary studies. One is a project-based or research-based uh, in one. Uh, and actually, the, uh, the uh, you know the uh, Japanese government as well as other private foundations in Japan has been cre uh, you know, it has been dramatically in promoting uh, for us to do uh, interdisciplinary uh, inter studies. So uh, to, to be honest, it's quite difficult, uh, easy for the professors who, you know, to get the money by writing some interdisciplinary uh, inter projects. So, even though it's temporal, but uh, they work together and, and, and solve together uh, under the and same uh, research questions. This is one uh, very simple but very, you know, uh, powerful way to combine uh, researchers together to do the interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary studies in Asia. The second one, uh, as uh, you know, Brian mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Kevin mentioned, the, uh, we try to you know, share students to uh, promote, uh, to uh, encourage the professors to know each other. Uh, so we just share the chat to, you know, not, not, uh, not marriage come first, but you know, having child come first, and then professor get married. So, uh, you know, so I'm conducting, uh, you know, uh, well, creating some interdisciplinary uh, education programs 
uh, sometimes in college professors to work together. Let's say the uh, our uh, institute, uh, you know, work with the Graduate School of uh, Information Studies as well as Graduate School of Arts and Sciences in our campus to run a new uh, graduate program called uh, uh, Integrated Human Studies for Cultural Diversity, in which so different type of uh, professors work together to create the personnel, uh, the person who can work for, let's say, international uh, uh, you know, NGOs or for international organizations to understand uh, or to conduct some researches under multicultural uh, circumstances. So, sharing a student sometimes uh, may, not, 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 not all times, uh, always, but sometimes, and in many times, uh, they create a very good platform to uh, make the professors work together, communicate together. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, in doing collaborating research, particularly uh, interdisciplinary research, uh, research institute is very important, but then the department structure. But in fact, in, in most uh, scholars, professors belonging to the uh, department rather than to some research institute. So their main job are teaching and researching in their own um, specified um, disciplines. So to ask some um, professors, um, particularly some young um, scholars, to work with um, professors in other uh, disciplines for some um, very good um, some common agenda, uh, it seems not so good for, for, for them to make their career uh, good for their promotion or to, to get tenure at the university system. So uh, without changing such kind of university structure, I think it's very uh, difficult to promote uh, research collaboration, particularly in the discipline. So, in, nowadays, the Korean Society, uh, the, the Korean Research Foundation, supported some um, some research program to give um, long-term fund on condition of giving tenure track professorship at the unit, at the institute rather than to the department. So in my institute, for example, uh, there are 12 uh, PhD or um, full-time research in my institute. Uh, they don't um, teach. They, their uh, obligation is uh, only research. But some of them like to move to the department rather than working at the institute. The main reason is, as uh, <coughs> someone mentioned, is the, their, uh, in a sense, uh, instability of their status at the university. And uh, in most uh, culture of university uh, is not so favorable to them because uh, you, you don't teach, you don't have um, any special roles for the students. So, uh, uh, they have some kind of very special uh, feelings or, or some uneasiness to work. But I think in order to collaborate uh, and uh, to make this kind of research center as a interacting space uh, beyond uh, dis disciplinary worlds as well as the beyond the national territories. I think there should be some kind of uh, research capacities in the research center. So I'm not sure how can it be done in, in the condition of university system and the professorship, tenure tracks. It's, it's, not, it's not a simple issue. But in the long run, I think in order to do, to enhance, in order to enhance this kind of research collaboration, I think institutes should be more uh, uh, institutionalized as a <coughs> as a institute with their own 
research capacity and a personality. Uh, uh, I'm not sure this is the answer to your question or not, but that might be. Any comments from the remaining panelists? <laughs> I'm going to go in the game for us. The reduction on the Asia research track. Unlike the premier research in the Asian and Asian, Asian study in research. Just uh, uh, regional, regional uh, research, but now a uh, uh, Chinese scholarship uh, scholar gave more and more weight on the Asian Asian study. study. Why? Uh, because uh, China, uh, China's government, China government uh, 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 proposed the new. Neighbor strategy last year, uh, last year, uh, our government uh, hold the uh, neighbor, uh, the neighbor uh, diplomacy conference. That's the first time uh, in on the past six, uh, 60 years. Uh, it indicates uh, Asia become a a core fear of China foreign strategy. So uh, more and more Chinese scholars uh, and institutions gave the, 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 the broad the, uh, the broad neighbor uh, research. Uh, the neighbor is neighbor fear uh, cover the uh, east uh, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, South Asia, uh, South Asia uh, Central, Central, uh, Central Asia, uh, even um, uh, Russia and the uh, United States. So, uh, in the future, uh, we, 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 the Chinese, uh, the Chinese, Chinese uh, Scholar and the, and the institution have uh, more and more the, the, the cooperation with uh, outside the, the other countries, uh, the, the, the colleagues. Professor Han, thank you. Uh, how hard is always difficult? Uh, in the morning, uh, Professor Park uh, suggested inter-Chile uh, collaboration. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, I understand these days uh, collaboration is going on uh, among uh, major schools, big names like Beida, Shikuyen, Stanford, Berkeley, uh, Todai. But from now on, let's pay attention to small but hot paper like uh, Professor Park Chang Shi Ko Hine, the Southeast Asian Studies Center, something like that. So let's uh, uh, try to find active small institutes too. Thank you. I still don't see. Oh, yes. Why don't you uh, put up your name? Thank you so much. Oh, yes. 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 There are also very practical things you can do to encourage interdisciplinary collaboration. I know some of the larger grants that we give out, we require that there be two co PIs on a project from two different departments. Mm -hmm. And if they bring in a lot of graduate students from different, even a larger range of departments, we give them even more money. Uh, so there, there are also ways of the carry and the stick to encourage people to think about. Uh, collaborating with people in other departments. I have some comments to, to that, but I, I'll be serving for later. Go ahead. No, but absolutely concur. I mean, I think uh, interdisciplinary collaboration can work on the, on the 
case-by-case case, uh, on a project basis. Sometimes, of course, there are carries involved because there, there's money around, either from the university or because of some research uh, foundations who are interested in that. Uh, but as long as uh, these things are not aligned with career incentives in the longer run, I mean, they won't really won't be flowering. Uh, because let's face it, I mean, uh, most uh, career opportunities are along sort of disciplinary uh, lines. Uh, most of the prestigious uh, sort of uh, journals are along disciplinary lines. I mean, would you really sort of suggest to one of your sort of promising uh, junior scholars or postdocs to, to embark on, let's say, on an interdisciplinary sort of career pattern? Uh, would that be sort of a really a good choice? I, I wonder. Uh, and as, as long as sort of, you know, uh, these uh, sort of career incentives don't, don't match what you're trying to achieve in terms of a, a, a interdisciplinary collaboration, I think it just won't, won't uh, really, won't really flower. Um, so, the trick then basically is if you have international, uh, inter interdisciplinary uh, collaboration, uh, to still make it, make it possible uh, to, to embark on a disciplinary, uh, disciplinary oriented career and to, to pr publish in disciplinary uh, uh, journals. So you're walking sort of tightrope uh, there because you want to have uh, both. Uh, but uh, the, the question is really how you can ideally align that. Uh, and that might work on, on a project basis, I would, I would suggest. Yeah. Yes? Uh, I'd just like to add, uh, maybe to slightly uh, uh, disagree with you on this, because I Great. think it's oh, okay. No, because I think, uh, I agree with Professor uh, saying that now there are these kind of small institutes, niche, that should be uh, further explored in the sense that um, more, uh, more and more we have uh, new areas that are uh, becoming uh, economically relevant in society. The decentralization process in many countries in Asia is making, for instance, uh, the role of expertise in cultural management increasingly important. So you can find sometimes some niche that's for, that includes this interdisciplinary uh, training that can also lead to something. And if we are completely uh, stuck in the old university model, it's, uh, I think it would be a shame. And, and urban studies uh, in, in our uh, uh, program, also the, the program on, on critical heritage studies, is targeting many forms of, of uh, expertise that can be uh, further, uh, further nurtured. And, and, and I think there are, uh, are people, uh, there are, there's a market actually, a uh, professional market, that may not be specifically uh, fitting into the traditional academic model. Yes, it's true. But uh, now every city has to have people who work on cultural uh, issues for instance. And that's where the humanities, social science can also bounce back and, and contribute to do something. Likewise, uh, with your program, uh, Kevin, uh, I was wondering, wondering um, you mentioned about the, um, the collaboration with the engineers, etc., and, and you are just facilitating their somehow interaction in the, into Asian context. But is there a way to also identify more proactive role for the social scientists vis-à-vis uh, -vis the scientists with the scientists? For instance, the, the impact of, of all these uh, uh, scientific, uh, I say scientifically related uh, uh, disasters, Fukushima, for instance, about society. So somehow, the, the, to the impact of, of science into society is something that increasingly is going to be relevant. So somehow, the, the, the social scientists can also uh, maybe be more proactive vis-à-vis -vis engineers, and engineers may need also that kind of problematization of, of their work. I don't know. Yeah, they need it and they appreciate it. I can tell you the engineers at Todai appreciate what we all have to contribute to understanding uh, uh, nuclear the disasters more than we had to. We didn't have to make the argument to them at all. And the engineers at Berkeley feel the same way as well, and I'm a little facetious in saying that we're just looking for crumbs from their table. Sometimes it feels like that's all we're looking for. Back to what Patrick said, about, or, yeah, Patrick said a moment ago, I'm not sure, in a way I don't think this uh, discussion is posed exactly correctly. I wouldn't have posed it as disciplinary versus interdisciplinary work. I would have posed it as disciplinary versus area studies work. And what I'm concerned about right now is I have one grad student work in prostitution in China, another one working in the automobile industry in China, and they feel they're not in the same line of work. They have nothing to say to each other. They want to talk to people who are studying the automobile industry in Korea, and another one wants to talk to somebody who's studying gender studies elsewhere. 
So what I see that's going to happen, and that concerns me greatly, is at a time that we need to know, for example, a lot about China, we're creating people who are hyper-specialized and who are just speaking out to the discipline. Now, where I agree with Patrick is it's exactly correct for the disciplinary incentives all line up to do that. So it's not as if area studies has a, a better, a bigger seat at the table than interdisciplinary does. It's, it's career suicide for them uh, to spend too much time on China and not to speak to the larger discipline. But that's what concerns me, not the interdisciplinary side, just to think notes widely about China, which you pick up by knowing people in all these different disciplines. And that's what's going on. But then again, I think the tension between uh, area studies and disciplines are uh, probably a uh, lot more, lot more uh, to the United States rather than other countries. Of course, in Korea, we don't really have that, that sort of uh, tension. Yeah, I wrote a talk a few years ago called Studying Chinese Politics and the Age of Specialization. I presented it in Australia and I presented it in the UK. And both of them reacted to this talk as these are the crazy things going on in North America now. And is it good? It's not nearly as bad as this here. Uh, any questions from the floor? Yes, Hosan. Uh, thank you, Jim. My name is Hosan Ma, uh, Professor Emeritus at the National University. I'm a sociologist. Well, uh, it is indeed very interesting to know how interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approaches are emerging out of nation studies. I have one particular uh, substantive question. Well, this morning, uh, President, uh, uh, Professor Kang Myung Bu, director of the Asian Center of National University, uh, suggested a kind of new transnational approach to East Asia, which requires sort of critical self-reflection of uh, very much state-centered, nationalist, driving you know, kind of you know, theoretical strategy. And he also talked about the citizen solidarity as a new basis upon which we may be able to get over the past legacy of state center development. And this session, I think, uh, Professor Hines' uh, presentation seems to me very much interesting because I got the impression that he tries to, to trace back the origin of the limitation of East Asian modernity by paying attention to uh, colonialism, whatever, you know, war, and uh, the role of authoritarian, uh, bureaucratic authoritarian state in East Asia, in China, obvious, Korea, obvious, Japan, not so much this state, but still very much interesting topic. Now, I'd like to hear from you whether you see any new emerging kind of, you know, uh, uh, focus, maybe attention to the fundamental kind of, uh, uh, risk we may call maybe we may call state cent the limit or the risk of state centered modernization in East Asia because we now see a lot of difficulties and dilemma and conflict in East Asia it is not just you know accidental at all it has a big reason because East Asian modernity has been driven by a strong state very strong nationalist in our know, kind of emotion and and uh, as an unavoidable consequences, and because of the lack of traditional justice on the part of Japan, this kind of conflict has emerged, but I don't see this kind of conflict can be solved in the very near future. So if we assume that this kind of conflict may go on, may go on for a considerable time, it may be a good time to pay attention what are the limitations or the risks that we face in East Asia because of unintended consequences of too much state-centered, nation-centered driving energy of uh, organization. So I wonder whether you see any this kind of changing focus in your uh, Asian center in different parts of the world. If you have any questions, I'd like to hear. But this kind of told me the information. Thank you. Let me get a few more questions if you have uh, them, and then uh, let the panelists respond. Because everybody started. <laughs> okay, so back to the panelists. If you have uh, answers to press on, this question. Yes, this is very to me. Uh, you just understand the, the past history. Uh, what can I? For them, it's too difficult. Uh, to me, uh, academics, uh, academics have two roles. 
forms. One is uh, understanding correctly. Another is uh, solving whatever problems, history problems, with a soft hand and with peaceful solution. So one small uh, way is uh, continuous dialogue, continuous uh, encounter. So I have no form. Uh, my name is Suki Kong from the Asia Center. Uh, it's, uh, Professor Chow is uh, you know, the highlight. So we talk about, uh, it seems to me that there's an agreement is uh, interdisciplinary. The matter of how. It's, uh, this is uh, the answer. Is everybody agrees. It seems to me it's uh, the interdisciplinary and multi uh, disciplinary approach. But so what? I totally agree. This is very important. So what kind of a topic uh, throughout the, the research we uh, kind of uh, uh, take the, the tangible you know, and, uh, things to, uh, to me. So, you know, as uh, the Professor Parks mentioned, uh, uh, the, the Institute, is, uh, they have uh, produced some uh, interdisciplinary approaches. So uh, many, uh, you know, many uh, researchers from the department with various uh, backgrounds, they uh, collaborate doing some of the research. But the uh, same thing is, uh, you know, the in case of Asia Center, still we have a uh, thematic approach, so we highlight it. But still, things is uh, dominated by the department and discipline, still. So, uh, we, are, we are struggling with how can we solve this, is uh, what topics really make people work together. So, uh, so far, we agree with that this methodology. You know, so the how can we uh, approach the basic topic? So, in the discipline approaches, so we agree. We so said, what topic? How? Uh, what topics will make people interested in the working together? So, we are trying to Asia. Asia today is uh, so the Professor Kang uh, uh, raised the issue. So, I wonder is uh, uh, the Professor Park is uh, the, uh, say something more. The, uh, could you share more the tangible uh, the research topics? Uh, you the institute uh, the working on the, this some um, uh, topic. So you, you mentioned that you know medicine and other folk science and sociologists are working together doing some research. So really, you know the successful the research collaboration. So this is a. Uh, this is really helpful for understanding the thematic approach, and uh, this is a very important for the, the people to work in together for the Asian context. Uh, so Thank you. Uh, since I was the one who introduced this uh, interdisciplinary uh, versus multidisciplinary contrast, uh, let me give you uh, what I'm thinking about this topic just for one minute. I think, uh, I mean, if I take an example with the field that I'm most familiar with, that is China studies. For instance, there are many volumes that talk about China's reform in the last 30 years, 20 years, uh, whatever. But usually the, the, the structure of the volume is one or two editors, and they give out uh, chapter assignments, politics, economy, society, welfare, PLA. I, I haven't even seen a volume that has 48 chapters in one book. But this is not multi uh, interdisciplinary, this is multidisciplinary. Yes. Because in order for that to be an interdisciplinary project, I think all these authors should be should get involved from the incubation phase. There should be a lot of dialogue discussions from the beginning, from the planning stage, although it is very difficult. Therefore, it is very difficult to see the genuine interdisciplinary outcomes. But I think the solution is therefore is not really in the edited volumes. I think the solution is actually in the core of the volumes, like the four or five people. They actually you know, get involved from the incubation stage through to the publication stage. One good example is actually from my field. It's a, a doping in transition that came out in 1980. Uh, quite a few scholars, uh, they didn't really think about the project from the beginning. They went to doping, which is a county level city in Zibo in China. And then they got to know a lot of people there. And then they came up with a team. Uh, of course, this is not really 100% you know, uh, uh, ideal, but that's one, one, one solution. 
that you can uh, sort of resolve this dilemma. Up to now, many of what we call interdisciplinary is actually multidisciplinary. So interdisciplinary research is becoming a sort of euphemism for multidisciplinary research. So, but you know, I know it's a tough challenge. But there is no other comment. Oh uh, yes, Professor Lam. Uh, your last mention about the uh, interdisciplinary definition, the definition of interdisciplinary. Uh, well, I think if you say, uh, if you try to defend, uh, define interdisciplinary like that, uh, I think it uh, may essentialize the nature of discipline, which is existing so far, like sociology. Do you, do, you, do, you, do, you know, do you think sociologist knows what sociology is? I'm not a sociologist. No, not a <laughs> it's always changing. So that's a problem why we are trying to use the term interdisciplinary. It's a symbol of uh, crisis of discipline. So if you essentialize this is uh, discipline, like sociology, political science, I think we are moving a different way. So that's my comment. No, actually, uh, I, I differ because interdisciplinary, there doesn't really have inter at this point. Inter means there should be interactions, organic interactions among different disciplines. Thereby, for instance, sociologists comes in, that there, there has to be an emphasis uh, that can facilitate the level of analysis that can only be used in sociology. But whether or not that is really the case in real, real setting is another issue. For instance, that reminds me of the contrast between multinational corporation and transnational corporation. What you talk, you talk about is more like a multinational corporation headquartered in New York, and they have a lot of branches across the world. Sort of top-down chain, chain of command, not like transnational. So, but anyway. Can we, can we end the session now or? Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, the session is adjourned. Let's give a big round of applause.